Linus Torvalds has been quite active this week as he's back on a thread on the Linux kernel mailing list around merging a DRM, Direct Rendering Manager subsystem, for changes in 6.18, a discussion that touches on Rust code formatting. And Linus goes in to criticize how the Rust format check tools are making bad decisions and pushing formatting that is confusing, inconsistent, and even harmful. There's a lot of dislikes here. We're going to get into all of this and read through the thread. So buckle up. Let's start reading here. This is from Danilo, who is addressing Linus and a couple other people. I have taken the pin init pull request through the DRM Rust tree for this cycle. No other tree involved. Signed off Danilo. And then a reply from Linus here. You are still corrupting indentation in your explanations. I don't know what you are doing wrong, but it's wrong. You seem to have lost all indentation. Look here as an example. And we can absolutely see that there's no indentation in this code applied. Notice how there are multiple sub areas, alloc, DMA, scatter list, DRM, and Rust, but it's all just about random jumble. Because you have apparently pasted it into your editor or MUA or whatever, and drop the indentation in the process or something. What kind of broken editor are you using? I'm not trying to start an Emacs or VI war here, but you seem to be using something truly broken. And then says Edlin, which is a sarcastic jab at the fact that is one of the oldest text editors ever used, included in, in MS-DOS, and it predates Notepad, WordPad, and even the original DOS edit program. It was a pure line editor, no screen based editing at all, and the formatting was horrendous. Anyways, Linus points out a similar thing here where, again, no formatting is taking place. Look again, no logic and you've completely corrupted any multi-level indentation that presumably existed at some point judging by the organization. What the hell? I try to make this all legible as I walk through it myself, so I regularly fix up people's language skills, etc. because I understand that English isn't always the native language. And that even if it is, some people just aren't very good at writing explanations. For these kinds of, I'm pretty sure you've just corrupted the formatting that was there in some original message, it's just annoying. Please make the explanations readable, not just the random jumble of words. And on a more technical side, I absolutely detest the mindless and completely crazy Rust format checking. And here's the first bit of shade being thrown. I noticed that people added multiple use crate XYZ next to each other, so I turn them into use crate and then groups those together with new lines, but all using one use crate versus someone might have done use crate XYZ, then use crate ABC, then use crate one, two, three, so on and so forth. Instead, to make it easy to just add another crate without messing crap up, the use statement around it had that format too. So it all seemed sensible and visually consistent, but then I ran Rust format check. And the thing is, all the bass backwards garbage, instead of making it clean and clear to add new rules, it suggests use crate XYZ ABC all in one line. And we could understand why this would get unwielding. Could you imagine doing XYZ ABC so on and so forth if you have a ton of crates and then that's all on one line and eventually it needs a word wrap. Yeah, that's just a mess. Anyways, but I have no idea what the heuristics for when to use multiple lines and when to use that compressed format are. This is just annoying. It's automated tooling that is literally making bad decisions for maintainability. This is the kind of thing that makes future conflicts harder for me to deal with. Miguel, I know you've asked me to run Rust format check, but that thing is just wrong. It may be right in the moment, but it is A, really annoying when merging and not knowing what the heck the rules are, and B, it's bad long-term when you don't have clean lists of add one line for a new use. Is there some sane solution to this? because I left my resolution alone and ignored the horrible Rust format check rules or results. I tried to Google the Rust format rules and apparently it's this. So Linus did do some digging and sees that it is possible to do the normal formatting that he suggested and not the small formatting that keeps being pushed out by the Rust format tool. We can see here that there are multi-line versus single line structures in Rust and clearly Linus performs the normal formatting because it's easier to read. Anyways, back to what Linus wants, can we please fix up whatever random heuristics that small items thing may make sense when you're talking things that really are one common data structure, but the use directive is literally about independent things that get used and smushing them all together seems entirely wrong. 
I realized that a number of users seem to just leave the repeated kernel XYZ, kernel ABC as separate lines, possibly because of this horrendous Rust format random heuristic behavior, signed off Linus. And the main contention here is that Linus is just not happy with the Rust formatting tool. It's the official formatting tool here in Linux that enforces a consistent style across all the Rust code. Its job is to reformat code according to the Rust style guide for the kernel and ensures all code looks the same everywhere, including the spacing, indentation, imports, braces, etc. And the main takeaway here is that Linus dislikes it because it breaks human readable structure. Just like he said, either we keep reusing the use kernel up front or it pushes everything together as use kernel XYZ ABC all in one line where he would like it more like this. It also has been causing merge conflicts. The kernel development involves thousands of contributors working on overlapping files. When Rust format reflows lines unpredictably, Git merges become very messy, as we saw when he mentioned that the formatting here doesn't include any indentation. Anyways, we're getting into more of the conversation here from other devs on this Rust formatting issue. But before we do, make sure to subscribe below, YouTube can get finicky, and smash that like button. Let's see what another developer has to say here. This is from Miguel. We have discussed use statements, formatting somewhat recently because of that, and rebasing patches, etc. Rust format allows to be configured. It has a few knobs for this that we are considering. For example, the import layout imports granularity and group imports. Some people like the braces, others one per line, etc. Sadly, the related options are unstable and nightly only but I can talk to the upstream to see what can be done so your opinions on this matter would help. In any case for you, my intention wasn't that you have to fight the formatting, but rather that after solving the conflict without thinking about the formatting, you would run make Rust format, i.e. instead of the other one, Rust format check, which is an indented, for example, continuous integrations. Leaving non-formatted files does hurt us though. For example, continuous integrations check it, and then I think people are generally happy about the simplicity of the formatting on the Rust side. So if the conflicts are already too frequent and or painful to deal with, then I would say we should already start writing the imports in a way that it reduces the conflict potential. Yet making it pass Rust format, it may be uglier than what some may like, depending on who one asks, but it keeps the Rust format clean property and eventually we may be able to get Rust format to give us the formatting we want and migrate to that. Cheers, Miguel. And now we get some more replies from Linus. In response to, I get about 15 to 20 pull requests in various formats from very different groups of people. Yes, exactly. If I just cut and paste them all into a changelog, it would be horribly inconsistent. Yes, exactly. That proves Linus's point. I try to harmonize them for myself so they're somewhat visually consistent. Me too. You just don't do a very good job at it, I feel. And then, i.e. single level of indenting is my limit. Why? Yes, do multiple merges and shows how to do that. And yes, try to make merge messages be legible is a fair amount of work, but looky here, another way to do it. And says, in other words, I do closer to an order of magnitude more merges than you. Doesn't seem like Linus is too happy about what was said. And I spend the time and try to do it right. I don't have some one level of indentation only rule. I try to make merge messages consistent and legible. Remember, a big word here is consistent. And in order to try to lessen the burden of that consistency, I then ask people I pull from to try to have better messages to make it easier for me to do that. If you get pull requests from people you pull from that make it harder for you to do a better job, please push back on them too. But maybe you now understand what I'm asking you to try to do a better job at formatting. Exactly like apparently you should ask the people you pull from, please, Linus. And then Linus replies again without letting anyone chime up yet. Let's get into that. But before we do, if you're ready to level up your Linux experience today, check out my checklist, cheat sheet, and my map, all available at SavvyNick.com with new flashcards. Linus moves on to say, side note, this is actually an area where it may be worth looking into, just having automation. I've actually been fairly impressed with some of the more recent auto select AI summaries, and I wonder if it might help maintainers to have some kind of summarize this pull request infrastructure. I'm not so convinced about the code writing side, but summarizing change logs sounds useful, but also rather less scary. And I'm not suggesting that because I would use it to summarize other people's pull requests, but as a way to make it easier for maintainers to write summaries of their own pull requests when they have 
Lots of different things going on. Adding Sasha to the participants since he's been doing the auto select summaries. And Sasha has been spending a lot of time trying to get summarization out of AI for the Linux kernel for different things like change logs and just summarizing what's happening or even searching tools and links in order to figure out what things have changed. And that's why we see them being included. Some of them have just been garbage, but a lot of them have seemed quite reasonable. So as a starting point, rather than as a final case, I think maybe some of the LLMs might be used for other things than making amusing fake videos, signed off Linus. It's interesting to see what Linus thinks about LLMs and how they serve a purpose in the Linux kernel. It looks like he's completely fine with summarizing things, checking rules, all that fun stuff. Really the technical documentation side of things more than actually contributing code, which he even, he even took a stab at earlier calling it scary. Then we have another developer, John, jump in here. The main complaint with Rust format is that it is extremely twitchy and unstable with respect to one line versus multi-line output, especially with use statements. For example, on today's Linux.git, I just now ran it and you can guess what happened. It changed its little mind about yet another statement, see below, and we can see what it did here, running make Rust format and then spits out the difference. It went from use crate in separate lines here and change it all into a one-liner as seen here, which is exactly the opposite of what Linus wants. And Linus responds, this reason that I'd like to fix the rule for use statements in particular is that they get a rather high rate of conflicts. And then the multiple entries per line is actually very annoying because the merge turns into a figure out small change within a line rather than one line from side A, one line from side B. And that makes sense because it's a little less natural to look at things. Imagine seeing which crate changed if it was all in one line and having to compare it, but side by side, if you have them, then you can see simply, oh, format got dropped or as page iterator got dropped on this specific line. And that's not because used lines are bad. It's actually pretty natural. And it is very similar to what we see in C with include lines and C files. Those two get much higher rate of conflicts in normal code. And it simply isn't a problem. The conflicts are trivial to resolve because unlike normal code where different people typically work on different functions, etc., the header includes, and for us, the use lines are kind of that shared area where everybody who makes a change does so in the same place. So conflicts in the area are normal and expected and not generally a sign of any problem. And this is the crux of everything. Linus wants consistency in these files because this is where people do a lot of crossover in these, well, he kind of relates them to header files in C. A lot of people will make changes in there and if everyone's making inconsistent changes or constantly changing up the formatting, it gets very confusing. Typically people will work on their own files and then merge them in without having a bunch of people touching that file. But this is the exact opposite when it comes to the header files or the inclusion of crates. That's the big issue here. But then that small items rule makes for extra pain in this area. Is it a huge pain? No, but it's an unnecessary annoyance I feel. In other words, I really think use is fundamentally somewhat different from the other Rust cases signed off Linus. And we'll end with Sasha here, trying to come up with some resolutions for this whole thing. Thanks for looping me in and for the prod on consistency. I agree that writing a clear commit message or pull request summary is often harder than the code change itself. With auto select, we have seen that AI can help when it's grounded. Recent agenic rag approaches let us draft summaries from the actual commits, tags, diff stats, and paths rather than freeform guesses. We still treat the result as a bot edited draft, not an authority. Looping in Constantin, who looked at adding extensions such as these two before, we should definitely look at adding more AI tools to support maintainer workflows and with good guardrail, including sourcing every claim from the input data, failing close on low confidence, so on and so forth. Some more before AI ideas, before AI summarization on the range and branch, draft a maintainer edible summary, headline group to highlights, notable fixes and reverts, stats, with links to source commits before AI cover on a series. Generate a first pass cover letter for a series or topic branch preserving style knobs, indentation, bullets, length before AI risks range. Surface cross subsystem touches, large churn, and code with prior regression history before AI validate range. Check that summary claims are supported by commits or tags, low, low confidence sections. Before AI style indent to max lines, apply consistent formatting to the generated text without changing context. Thanks, Sasha. So Sasha does go into saying that there are use cases for AI to help with, not replace the way that, that we're currently formatting and summarizing tasks. And there are potential benefits here. 
to write clear pull request summaries, format cover letters, group change logs together, and keep indentation and bulleting consistent across headers. These are all tedious manual repetitive tasks that aren't really hard, but they're time consuming. And, and clearly we're seeing inconsistency, which Linus seems to be the most ticked off about here. What's really nice is that they fit into the existing B4 tooling, which is already the de facto tool for patch handling in the Linux kernel, which helps to fetch, apply, generate, and send patch series information. So having a new B4 AI command doesn't really disrupt any workflow, but it also extends the B4 tooling to be more robust with some AI. To me, this is a compelling idea to address real maintainer bottlenecks, especially when it comes to summarization style and validation. I'd be interested in what you think about this whole thing. Yes, this is a conversation about Rust and the way that the current formatting takes place, but these are all issues that come up in every language. So does it make sense to use AI in this case? Is there a different way that we could validate this? Does the Rust formatting tool just need to become better at keeping consistent formatting with an understanding of how large projects like the Linux kernel really need consistency in order to keep maintainability across the code? I'm interested in what you have to say and thanks for watching to the end of the video. You're a true fan. Don't forget to subscribe below and smash that like button on the way back up. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.